Mom's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? She deserves it. She's a great mom. Okay, what are we missing? We got the eggs, the juice, the muffins, got the bacon, cereal, oatmeal. Dad, nobody likes oatmeal. Hey, I know we got chocolates for your mom, but there was something else that she wanted for Mother's Day. What was it? Was it a new Bible? Look how worn out that thing is. Dad, gotta start watching out for these things. I bet it was a spa day. I bet it was a new car. Uh, definitely not a new car. She's basically my personal Uber driver. We could both use the upgrade. <laughs> no. Was it those fuzzy socks? Dad, you get that for her every holiday. She has like a thousand of them. Is it one of those candles that she puts in our bedroom? Hold on. Why does she only put that on my side? What was it she wanted for Mother's Day? Dad, I remember what mom wants for Mother's Day. What's that, buddy? The sleep bin! <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> We clearly owe you brunch after church. <laughs> what you owe me is a nap. Yes, yes we do. All right, good morning church, how you guys doing? Hey, before we begin anything, let's praise God, right, amen? And then after that, obviously, happy Mother's Day. Everybody got their uh, bouquets, corsage. Yeah, all right. So uh, wear it, because it took a lot to make it, all right? <laughs> well, some of you guys may know me, may not. My name is Paul Park. I'm the pastor at Free Life Community Church. And uh, uh, Rick asked me to open the service. So I said, yes, I will open the service. But I didn't know I had to do the whole service. And so... <laughs> We're going we to make this happen, um, but it's a good Sunday. So, uh, yeah, a couple of announcements. Um, is, oh, oh, there's a prayer summit. I know that. There's a prayer summit on May, uh, I think it's 24, 25, 26. Yes, prayer summit uh, with different churches in the Fountain Valley area. Uh, my biggest passion is to see the body of Christ united more and more uh, as we continue to journey in this life. Um, especially because that's what heaven's going to look like. Amen. And so please come out. Um, I think we are here Friday night on the 26th. Yes, 20, Friday night, 26th. Okay. Uh, we're going to do some praying. We're going to do some worshiping with different um, uh, people uh, from uh, different churches and found values. That's going to be a good time. A couple of announcements that I would like to invite the found is uh, for all the men out there, um, the young strapping men that I see in this congregation. All right. Uh, May 27th, there's going to be a men's breakfast at 9 a.m. Uh, we want all the guys to come out uh, to come and just fellowship with one another. May 27th. Um, you, this is the time that you can really use the excuse, honey, I got to go to church at 9 a.m. So that's the time that you can really use it. Okay. And the other times, I don't know. Um, but that's going to be a good time to just fellowship. So it's open to the whole campus. Um, and a uh, bit of a plug for me is June 4th, Free Live Community Church is turning two years old. Um, and so it's awesome that we can, yes, praise God, it's awesome, that, it's awesome that we can celebrate it here. So we are inviting all of you to come and celebrate with us. There's going to be a few baptisms as well. And so there's a baptismal pool, right, that can still be used. Um, if not, you know, we'll just get a bucket or something. I mean, you know, any means necessary to get people baptized, so we're going to do that. Uh, we also have these wonderful bottles uh, representing a partnership with Horizon Pregnancy Clinic. Um, so they're in the back, um, and so you can put your donations in there. It's a great cause, and then bring it back to church. And we have a little promo video to, to show that. I left knowing 
Amen. Amen. So let's continue to support. Uh, last year we raised over $1,000 um, and over 623 babies are here because their moms chose life in 2022 because of your support. Um, so, um, so it's so precious to continue to support and make sure all of our children are taken care of. Amen. Amen. Uh, a, few, a couple more announcements is we're going to have a wonderful service today. We have Sonia coming up to preach from La Cima, so that's going to be awesome. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Amen. And then we have our uh, missionary here to talk about their work a little bit later, and we're going to introduce him a little bit later on. And so um, it's going to be a good time. Um, so let's pray. So Father, we thank you so much for this awesome day wonderful day, the day that you've created for us to come together as a body, one body, to praise your name and glorify your son, Jesus. Father, especially today, you've created um, mothers to care for us, to be images of love, compassion, mercy, patience, resilience. Um, and so we thank you for giving us mothers, whether they're um, biological or spiritual. Father, we thank you so much. And so, Father, as we continue to worship today, let us focus on you and what you've done on the cross through your son, Jesus. Take this service as an offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of you women. If you all will stand, I'm just going to pray again before we get started with worship. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we get to celebrate um, our mothers, being a mother, having children. God, I just pray for those who um, may have lost a child, may have lost a mother, uh, may not have been able to have children. God, I just pray that you'd be with everybody. We honor all of the women in our lives, God, because even if they don't have children, um, women are very special and they just have that motherly gift so god we thank you for that pray that you'd bless this time of worship and this day um, and we give it to you in jesus name amen, amen. let's sing as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us Come rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. So calm down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Spirit was moving over the water. 
we thank you for this time. We thank you that you died and we have your spirit living in us, God. That same power lives inside of us. We thank you for who you are and what you've done and what you continue to do, God.
sometimes we forget the power of God. Even if we're not seeing dead people rise, or people with leprosy healed, like he is still, still healing. He is still working, even though we don't see it all the time.
God, we thank you for your peace. We thank you that we don't have to rely on our own strength. God, we cannot rely on our own strength because we will not make it. We thank you for your presence in our life, for your, your strength, God, your peace. God, I just pray peace over everybody's minds today and hearts. You just be with every single one of us and that we would focus on you over anything else, over any situation, over any circumstance, over any person that's irritating us. God, that we would focus on you in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like having Autumn back. So good. Thank you, Thank you, Autumn. Okay, there's some children in here. Come on down. Come on. There's one. Yeah, that's him. Everybody, this is Osiah. Say hi. <laughs> okay. Here, sit right here, guys. Sit right here on the, on the top step. I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you, but I don't know if you're going to like it, okay? Um, do you guys like, well, okay, let's have a guessing game first. I have something in this jar that's in, behind this paper. You can't see it. <clears throat> it's small, and it's black. Any ideas yet what it is? Okay, it has a lot of legs, like eight of them. A cockroach? No, a cockroach has six legs. Six legs and two antenna. Not a centipede. A bug with eight legs. Joshua? A spider. There's a spider in this jar. You see it? Okay, before I show you this spider, I want you to describe a spider. Like, what are some words that you would use for a spider? What? No, like, like words that you'd use. A black widow is a kind of spider, but is it, is it um, creepy? Things like that. Creepy. Spiders are creepy. What else are spiders? What? Venomous. Venomous. Some of them are venomous. Yeah. What do you think, Liv? What's a word to describe a spider? No. No. They're kind of gross. Are they kind of yucky? A little scary. Yeah. Kind of gross. Dangerous. Yeah. What? I touched the spider once, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I touched the spider, too. You touched the spider, too? Okay. Well, you can touch this one later if you want to. Okay, so, but before I want to show you this, yes, Lily? This is, my, this is my spider in my house. There was a spider in your house? Was it, what was it? Was it big or small? Um, this is, this is going to be... I was it because I was in my candy I was just gonna be because I was, like, was drop my trampoline. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So this spider though is different than the other spiders that you're thinking of. And I have some I have some visual aids up there, but I'll show you guys first. I found this spider on my on my way in. I it was in the hallway over there. And it changes what I was gonna do for my children's moment. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is how Rick works, by the way. <laughs> okay, so look here. Here's the spider. Can you see it? Okay, and while you guys are looking at this, I think I last minute asked Katie to put some pictures. I'll, I'm going to hold it. No, I'm going to hold it because I, I don't want it to escape. Can you see? Okay. Do you guys see that spider? Have you ever thought spiders could be cute? So that's... Do you guys see the, the pictures up there of the spiders? That's what kind this is. This is called a bold jumping spider. And it looks just like that one right there up on the screen. And he's cute, right? But you would never know it. You would... <laughs> what is he doing? He's eating his paw. He's eating his paws. You never thought about spiders having paws, but when they're furry like that, kind of... Okay, so, but listen, but listen. If you saw a spider walking down the hallway... You might, well, the first thing you might think to do would be, what would you do? I would yell. What? I would yell. Okay, what else? Do nothing. What? I will do nothing. Do nothing? You wouldn't, like, go squish it? My mom would squish it. Say it again? My mom would squish it. 
<laughs> she probably would. <laughs> so she doesn't tell me about spiders because I do that. Okay, so here's the thing about this, this spider and a lot of other things, and actually you guys. God, God sees this spider differently than people see the spider. People see the spider as gross, kind of scary, kind of yucky. But we, when we look closely, we see the spider as beautiful and cute and kind of cool, interesting, right? It's the same thing about you guys. Sometimes, sometimes when people look at you, they might not think the nicest things, especially when you're wild. <laughs> okay, they might not think the nicest things, but that's not what God thinks. What God thinks you are amazing. God thinks you are incredible. God thinks you are beautiful, okay? Even when other people don't think that. Even when you're yelling at your mom or even, because, well, none of you yell at your mom, right? Joshua, do you yell at your mom sometimes? No. No? No. Oh, oh, good job. Round of applause for Joshua. (laughs) I like that. Okay. So even when you're doing things that are a little bit, a little bit not so great, God sees you differently. He sees you as beautiful. But you know who else sees you like that? Who? Your mom and dad. Your mom. Your mom. So even when other people around you see you as kind of, and your dad, but today especially your mom, because your mom see you differently than the rest of the people see you. The rest of the people see you as wild or crazy or a problem or things like that, but not your mom. Your mom sees you as, as you really are because she really gets to know you, okay? Just like we really got to know this spider today, okay? So when you think about when you're feeling yucky, just know that that's not how God sees you and that's not how your mom sees you because your mom loves you. Okay, guys? What? Can she keep him as a pet? Oh, mom says no. Sorry. Here, here, let's take him out. You guys can go look at him in Sunday school, okay? All right, come on. Thanks, guys. Amen, amen. Uh, Just to make sure, we don't have spiders in my house. My children are safe. I don't know what they're talking about. It's time to go to the Lord in prayer. And for those online, uh, you can type in your cares and concerns in the comment section on Facebook, and we will look at them after the service. Then you can rejoin us when we return. For those here, please share your prayer requests, praise reports, joys, and concerns as well. So.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much. And we lift up these prayers, joys, and concerns to you, prayers of just future plans, and that you have a will for us, whether it's in our mission field or jobs. We pray for family and health. We pray uh, for, for Pastor Glenn and his continuing uh, just fight and passion to deliver the gospel in the local church. We pray for all of our moms and our grandmas that sacrificed loved us, cared for us in every situation. We pray for other health concerns. We pray for this country. We pray for leaders, especially during this time. We pray for just people that rather than their own agendas, they look to you for forgiveness. They look to you for repentance. They look to you for guidance, truth. Father, as a local church, as the body, let us continue, not just to be better, but to be like your son Jesus, to look like what you've done on the cross and live a life of sacrifice, unfailing love for each other. In Jesus' name we pray. And as you prayed continuously, let us pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is my favorite part. And now it's time for the offering. You see, I try to teach my people that, and all I got was groans and moans. And There are many ways to give uh, at the found. There is a joy box in the back. There's instructions on the screen, and there's more information um, and address where you can send your offerings and blessings back of the bulletin. And now Trevor will introduce the offertory. Well, good morning, y'all. It's great to be with you. Um, this offertory piece uh, is based off of a pretty old text, as is most things in the church. Um, but the, the text of this is, is your, your call to arms, if you would. Uh, as you, you know, hear the message this morning and as you will leave this place, it is your, your constant reminder to take up your cross. And it wasn't something that was recommended to you. It was something that Christ said. He told you, take up your cross. This wasn't uh, an option. This wasn't a, uh, a brief passing moment, you know, speaking to the apostles. It was, do it. Take up your cross. Follow me with humble heart, with loving and a servant mind. Take up your cross and follow me, the Savior said. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would
peace, nor think till death to lay it down. For only those who bear the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. Amen. Now, would you please join us for the doxology? Father, we thank you for um, just who you are and receive these blessings, receive our talents, treasures, and time to expand the glory, expand the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh. Do we stand? Oh, we're going to go back. All right. Our, uh, our hymn this morning to sing together is Happy the Home When God is There, number 445. The words are in your hymnals. If you'd like one, the ushers will have them for you in the back. Otherwise, the words will appear on the screen. Today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 2, 1 through 11. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up or be on the screen. John, chapter 2, 1 through 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. 
each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom and said, aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This is the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. This is the word of God. I am super excited to hear the word of God from this sister. Um, I, met, I mean, when I first met her, when I came here, she was just running around. And you can also always see her running around doing something. And so, which means that either two things, um, she loves the Lord or she loves the Lord. And so, uh, will you please welcome Sonia Perez to bring the word of God. Well, I, I have to say that I don't like to run, so it's the Lord, okay? <laughs> For sure. Um, I'm so happy, family, to be here today. It, it's, a, it's a pleasure, and I, thinking about what you had mentioned about grandmothers and mothers, and as I stand here today um, sharing the word with you, I stand on the shoulders of many women that came before me, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my mother, and I'm just, just thankful that um, I can follow in their footsteps. So today, Pastor Paul read the verse, and it's talking about a wedding. Who likes to go to a wedding? I love to go to weddings. I love to go to weddings, okay? Uh, we just had a family kind of reunion. It was a birthday party, and I walked around. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that a little later because I'm getting ahead of myself at this moment. But I, I want to talk about the recipe for a miracle. Okay, Who needs a miracle this morning? Just a few? I need a miracle. We all need a miracle. Some of us don't realize that we need a miracle, Okay, and, and today I'm going to do a little bit of confessing because th they kind of laughed when I was telling my family, like, I'm going to do about um, the, recipe, the, mir uh, the recipe for a miracle. And they're like, oh, okay, because I, I don't cook. I don't cook. You know the pampered chef? I am the most pampered chef there is, and my, everything's in a box because I don't cook. And, and the funny thing is, is that, um, but I, but I do know how to order well and make reservations, so I think it kind of it works out. But I think that my girls, up until the first 10 years of their life, they thought that food came out of a window, okay? <laughs> so every time they saw a window, they had their hand out, you know? Uh, but I've gotten better, and nobody's starving, and everybody looks pretty fit, so I think I'm doing an okay job. But um, there's magic in a recipe. You know, there, there's two things. There's the ingredients and there's the directions, right? How many of you guys have like family recipes, like books, recipes that are all like, they have oil on them, they, they're, you can hardly make out what they say, and, and we go back to them, right? And, and here's the thing, when we talk about a recipe, it produces something. There's something in the directions and the ingredients that produces something. And, and it's so interesting because I, I've followed recipes, even on Pinterest, if you've been on Pinterest, like I follow the recipes and it, it just doesn't look Pinterest worthy. It just doesn't look right. But you know, one of the things that I need is you could put these things all together, but you need to have relationship. And what I mean by that is, is that I may know how to put these things together that my mom has taught me and and have the ingredients and have the directions, but I kind of still need that guidance. And you know, the thing is, is that we have been given the recipe for life, right? Amen to that? The recipe for life. But you know what? I'm still really good at forgiving. I'm still really bad at forgiving. I'm bad at, at being joyful. I'm bad at, you know, a lot of the fruits of the Spirit. I struggle with patience. And even though I have the recipe, and it should produce all those things, I fall short. I struggle. Does anybody struggle with those things? Okay, just a few people. <laughs> I guess I'm giving all my confessions here. But so, you know, you know what happens when we have the recipe, 
and we have the ingredients, but we don't have the relationship, it doesn't produce the right results. And I think sometimes, why the relationship? My, my husband, he, his mother cooks, and she tells me she doesn't like to cook, but I know she likes to cook because her food is good. And so I'll say, go ahead and make that, that. I love what your mom makes. And he says, go get the recipe. I'm like, no, 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 she's your mom. How about you get the recipe? And he sits there, and he starts to make this recipe. And halfway through, he calls her up. And he says, Mom, how do I do it now? Like, do I do the chicken? And, and, and what time do I start entering, putting in the tomatoes? And, and she'll tell him. And then the second time again, he'll start the recipe, and he'll call her again. And, and about the third, fourth time, right, he, she says, didn't you write it down? Like, you keep calling me. Don't you have the recipe? But what I think he, he's looking for, and what we all are looking for, is to do it right. To follow the recipe. To, to do it the right way. And in, in John, it says, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. And, and it dwelt among us. And what I think is, is for years, we've had the recipe. There's been the recipe. There's been the law. But there was no relationship. And when we have a recipe and no relationship, we're kind of like the Pharisees. We're doing all the right things, but not getting the results that we need. And you know what? Religion's kind of like that. Religion's like that. It's following a recipe without the relationship, and not getting the right results. I have a lot of recipes I think about, but there's one my grandmother used to make, and it's a rice pudding. And I love this rice pudding. And, and she makes, I can eat it hot, I can eat it cold, and she used to make it all the time. And everybody, in Spanish, abuelita is what is grandmother. And we call her tita. So tita would make this rice. And every time we went to an event, did tita make the rice? Tita made the rice pudding, okay? Everybody was excited. And, and then she passed. So there was no rice pudding. So everybody tried to make this recipe. Every time I went to a family event, oh, there's Tita's rice and I, rice pudding. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I try it. It's like, yeah, it kind of falls short. Next, next, yeah, no, no, I did the recipe. Fall short. Pretty soon I would see the rice pudding. I wouldn't even try it because it wasn't hers. Have you ever tried something that isn't quite the same as you remember it? And it's kind of a disappointment. And so one day I go and my mom says to me, go try the rice pudding. It's Tita's rice pudding. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll make my way over there. Serve myself a dish. I tasted it and it was Tita's rice pudding. What did I say? Tita, where are you? Where are you? Are you here? No. I said, who made the rice pudding? And I go and I find out that it's my cousin. And I come to her and I said, you made that rice pudding. It tastes just like Tita made it. And she says, I know. And I said, well, how? Everybody's tried it. Everybody's got the ingredients. Everybody's got the recipe. She goes, you remember, I lived with her. I was with her. She would make it. We would make it together year after year after year. She had the recipe. But more than that, we all had the recipe. But she had the relationship, and she got it right. So here, let's set the, the setting for what's about to happen. This is a wedding. It's a Jewish wedding. And those weddings usually last seven days. And they are fun. Even though we may think, oh, it's a kind of serious. No, no, no. They were amazing. Can you imagine a wedding that lasts seven days? I go back to my family reunion that I just went to last week. I want a wedding. So I would see all the little the nephews that now are like in college. And it's like, anybody's Anybody has prospects for a wedding? I, I need to go to a wedding. I want to go to a wedding. They're like, no, not yet. And I go to the next one. Oh, it's got a girlfriend, boy. Okay, it, possibly a wedding. They're like, no, they want to get their career started. That's a whole other thing, right? And so um, it, at the dinner, I just imagine Jesus is there. Now, where do you think he was in this wedding? Um, remember, remember, it's a fun wedding. Where do you think he might have been? Anybody? No? Sitting at a table, praying, dancing. That's right. That's my Jesus. I think we have the same Jesus. Some people may have an issue that he was dancing, but it doesn't matter. He was probably dancing because that was part of the culture, and that's my Jesus. 
He dances. I love it. And, and that's, that's why I wanted my cousins to have a wedding, because I want to hit the dance floor, you know? <laughs> I think that's fun. And we do it as a family, and we love it. But here's the thing. He's dancing, probably doing the electric slide or the boot scoop boogie. I don't know. And it says his disciples were there, about five of them. So can I imagine? I can just imagine Bartholomew, and they're just all dancing and moving to the music. You know, I've seen the dances. It's kind of something like this, right? And so they're having a good time, and all of a sudden, Jesus' mom, Mary, starts to notice they're out of wine, you know? And she's noticing this, and Jesus is dancing with the disciples. They're having a good time. I don't know if you've ever seen The Chosen. Has anybody ever seen The Chosen? It's amazing. That dance scene is, like, amazing. It shows that wedding, and one of the things I like is in that scene, if you have a chance to watch it, it shows the humanity of who Jesus is. Sometimes we make him so serious, and, and he was 100% God and 100% man, and he enjoyed things, and he was a part of things, and he was in that celebration. And Mary looks at him and says, Jesus, Jesus, come, come, come over here. And I think he's thinking, okay, he, he's got a conflict here. He's Jesus, fully God and fully man. But in his deity, he's thinking, Woman, because we know he called her woman. I like that verse the way it says, dear woman. In my version, it says woman. Okay? <laughs> it does say dear woman. That was soft. Woman. And so she, I'm sure if he had a middle name, she would have said Jesus, whatever that middle name was, because when we want to call somebody's attention, we're like, hey, come, 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 come over here. And I'm pretty sure she didn't want to make a scene because once somebody starts calling somebody over, you're like, oh, what's going on over there? So he's waiting But then I think his humanity says, my mama's calling. I'm going to listen. And you know the funny thing is, is, have you heard that saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy? So you listen. And so he goes over there, and a lot is happening, you know. And she tells him, there is no wine. And he says, woman, what does this have to do with me? I was looking at that version, and I saw some other versions, and and it was like, even in Spanish, because I'm going to be sharing in Spanish, it says, ¿Qué tiene que ver conmigo? Like, what is, this, what is this about? What does it have to do to me, with me? And it's funny, because it wasn't a disrespectful thing. But it wasn't something that I feel that he was planning on acting on. It wasn't something that he was paying attention to. Not that he didn't know everything that was going on, because he did. And he sees her, and he thinks, I am the Messiah. I am the son of God. Do you know who I am? I am who is, who was, and is to come. I am God, and there is no other. But like I said, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? And she was concerned. And in some of my reading, it said that she might have been a friend of the family or possibly a relative to the family to be involved. And here is where we see it's the first initial miracle. And guess who instigates it? Guess who starts it? Mama. And maybe here she's doing the prototype or she's creating the recipe for all of us to receive a miracle in our lives. Because remember we talked about every recipe has ingredients and it has instructions. So we're going to talk about a few of the ingredients. And at this wedding there were guests, there were servants, and there was the wedding planner, okay? When you, I don't know if you've ever paid a wedding planner or you know how much they make. They make a lot of money, okay? And for them to run out of wine, that is huge. And only Mary was paying attention and could see that they were running out of wine. I don't know. I think we do have as mothers, even as women, special powers to know when things are running out. It could be a whole house full of people, and I'm the only one that notices we're out of milk, Okay? And they may leave like this much milk and close it. So they don't have to tell me, we're out of milk or whatever. Or the worst, and I was oversharing, probably like toilet paper. How does no one know <laughs> that we're out? It, it, it's, it, it's crazy to me. But she's, re- she's recognizing and she's knowing that they're out of something. It's getting empty and she's concerned. And you know what? She shows us the first ingredient. It's, we have to see the problem. And I don't know about you, we all have problems. Some of the songs we were singing today was, was, was 
about things that have gone on or things that we're struggling with. You know, we talked about the same God. We talked about David and Mary and all these people. That's us now. That's us now. And she starts to talk about the problem. Everyone's dancing, but she's aware. And she knows that this is going to be embarrassment for the family. To run out of wine, this is going to be embarrassing. I'm going to ask, can you see your problem? And, and maybe you're like, yeah, of course I see my problem. I see it every day. I feel my problem. I know my problem. And you know, the fact is, is that it's quite possible that the problem, we don't know the problem. Or the problem we, we pay the least attention to is the bigger problem. You know, we may say, oh, you know, my problem is finances. Or my problem is relationship. And you know, it could be a deeper problem, I'm just saying. It could be that we're trying to achieve something, to show somebody that we're worth something, trying to achieve to keep up. Or maybe that relationship is the thing that's going to fill us. And when it doesn't, it's a disappointment. But it's a deeper issue. It's maybe our insecurity. It's my insecurity. It's the value that I've placed on myself. It's fears. It's anxiety. And we think that what we do to fill it or to mask it is going to solve it. But you know what? If we can't really see the problem, we can't receive the miracle. And I think that today, with me and with all of us, we need to ask God to show us what's the problem. What's, what's the deeper problem? Because we see a lot of surface things that go on, but it's the deeper problem. She knew there was no wine. And she went straight to Jesus. She went straight to him. Jesus, we've got a problem. And she didn't run to Costco, because that's probably what I would have done. Like, okay, where's the nearest Costco? Anytime there's a problem, where's the nearest Costco? She didn't call a friend to see who could help out. She went to the source, who she knew could help out, could do something. And that's where she shows us the second ingredient. She shows us to seek the power. Mary knew that Jesus had the power to manifest something in a moment that would take years. Jesus was the only one that had the power. But I asked myself, why the wine? Why the wedding? It wasn't like a big thing. Yes, it would have been embarrassing. Yes, people would have talked about it for years. Do you remember when? But that wasn't the thing. It was simple. But you know what this shows me? This shows me that God is in the details. What somebody may say that is such a big thing for you, that's, that's not really a big deal. That's not anything. It is to you. When my son, he, my, my little son, he's in the second grade and he struggles with reading. And we do the flashcards, and we do all this stuff, and he's struggling. And he reads something, and the other kids say, oh, that's not a big deal. That's not a big book. And I'm saying, yes, it is. It is for him, and it is for me. And it shows me that God is in the details because he's going to do something at that wedding. It's the little things. It's the small things. It's the test you're taking. It's, it, it's the, the job interview that you're going to. It, people can tell you, don't worry, you got it, you get it again. But it's the small things to the big things. It's everything. And you know what the interesting thing about it, when, I think, when you think about the wine? Wine takes time. It's not something that happens really quick. It's something that needs to grow, that needs to be harvested, that needs to be crushed and fermented. And if there is no crushing... There is no wine. How many of you today can testify of something God did in a moment that would have taken years? Something that would have taken years in a moment. I know myself, I could probably preach hours on the things that God has shown me in my life where he turned it around, where I was at the end of the line, and everybody looked back at the line and said, yeah, you're really far back. 
You're not making it. And in an instant, God took me to the front of the line. That even the people that were in line say, how'd you get there? Even your haters have to go, how'd you do it? And I have to say, it wasn't me. I don't even know. The crushing of the grapes in the wine. The wine takes time. And she says, we're out of wine. And he says, woman, it is not my time. Because wine takes time. And in his deity, he is speaking. He knows he can do it. And in his humanity, he knew it was the responsibility of the groomsmen to provide the wine. And he failed to make sure that there was enough. And without the wine, there was no wedding. I know some of you are going like, there shouldn't be wine at the wedding. You know, <laughs> there was wine at the wedding, and I'm sure everybody had some. But you know what? I think in a moment, Jesus is looking at this wedding and looking at this situation and saying, wait, there's another wedding. As he looks at the wedding, his deity says, wait, there is another bride. There is another groom, and that's me. And it's my responsibility to produce the wine. And my wine will never run out. My wine has to be enough to cover everybody, to give everybody strength from day to day, you and me. It's got to be enough to cover everybody, to, get, to cover the sins of everyone. And it reminds me of the wine in the upper room where he says, this bread is my body broken for you. This cup, this wine is my blood poured out for you. A blood, the blood enough to cover the sins of everyone. It was going to be spilled out. And the my wine is going to cover the entire world. But he says, woman, it's not my time. Here she sees the problem. She seeks the power. And now this is the next ingredient. She tells the servants, do whatever he says. She doesn't at any moment say, okay, Jesus, you better do this. She's real careful there. She just presented the problem to the one who had the solution and the power. And when she does that, she just turns to the servants and says, do whatever he asks. And I'm sure she walked away. And as they begin to do this, this shows us another recipe, another ingredient. It's that it needs participation. And if this miracle is going to happen, we have to participate. We have to be part of this miracle. Because and when Mary is telling them, she speaks to the participants. Did, did God need anybody? Did Jesus need anybody to help with that miracle? He could have done it himself. We hear about when he said, she's healed. And he didn't even leave. But he was going to to use people to perform his miracle. And someone's got to carry this miracle out. Do you remember Mary? I think she was drawing from her past. I think she was drawing from what she knew. Because when she was a young girl, and the angel visited her and said to her, okay, this is going to get crazy really fast, so I'm going to break it down for you. You're going to have a baby without having known a man. Th that would have been a lot. First, for an angel to appear, that would have been a lot. I think I would have left running. But listen to her response. She says, let it be to me according to your word. I'm participating. She's going to participate. She had 30 years of history with Jesus, and she knew who he was. She knew what he had done. Any miracle God is going to manifest, he will need your participation. He will need my participation. He is the super, and we are the natural. And that's when he performs the supernatural. Now I have to ask you, are you believing God for a miracle you won't even participate in? Is there a miracle you're asking for God to do, and you won't participate in it? Maybe it's healing a relationship. And maybe you're the one that's going to have to text. That it's been broken. It's, it's, it's beyond repair. Maybe you're the one that's going to have to set up a lunch. That's participation. And one more time, he wants us to participate. This is not something he's, he can do on his own, but he's not. 
So we see the ingredients. You seek the problem, see the problem, seek the power, speak to the participants. And then it says, the final step, that they went and he told them. What did he say? He said, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water so they are filled so they filled them to the brim. And he told them, now draw out some and take it to the master of the banquet. So here, he's telling them to fill the jars. I had the privilege of going to Israel in April. And the first stop was Cana of Galilee. And I got to see some of the jars, and they were like about this high and about 20 inches of opening, but it wasn't like what I expected a jar. It was made out of stone. It was like hewn out, like carved out. And it was impressive to see. It was behind glass, and I was thinking, wow, that's not kind of what I expected. But, and, and as I did my further research, it said that these were used as Jewish ceremonial vessels for cleansing. And, and, and y'all, I had to tell you that I wanted to cry when I read that. Because you know what it made me think? They were used for cleansing. If someone would clean their hands before they'd go into that wedding or to that party. So that's kind of dirty, I think, you know, right? You're cleaning off. And he's going to make wine in there? It would be like me saying, okay, you know, we're going to make wine. So fill up the bathtub with water. How many of you guys are in for that one? You know, we're going to drink it. And, and I think, what is he saying here? What is the, 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 the symbol here? And I have to think that even whatever you've been through, whatever I've been through, the things that have marked our lives, the things that we don't feel good about, God is going to use it to make a miracle, to pour out something amazing in vessels that were used for cleaning. And here is the other thing that happens. And then he tells them, and present it to the master of the feast. Can you imagine? One of the things, a detail that just gets me every time I read it, it says they filled it to the brim. Now, if I am the waiter and I see that we're out of wine and he's first he's saying, we're going to fill those like, you know, we've got some other ones that are just a little better. No, no, they followed his directions. But he didn't tell them where to fill it. Do you notice that? He said, fill it. But the Bible says they filled it to the brim. And you know what I like about those guys? They were willing to go all out. When I ask God for a miracle, I'm going to fill it to the brim. I'm going to go all out. And you know that I'm praying for some people in my family that have kind of strayed from the Lord. And it's hard to keep praying year after year after year after year. But I'm going to fill it to the brim. So now when I pray and I ask God for a miracle, I said, Lord, I don't want to tell you how to do it, but this is kind of what I'd like. And Mary kind of told Jesus, this is what we need. But now I say, Lord, this is my request or better. And you know why I want to say better? Because he, only he knows how much better this can be. I can't in my mind understand how good God can make things. And when he's answered prayers and he, when he's done miracles, I look at from five, six different ways and I'm like, how did it all tie in? How did it all come together? And you know what? When God gives you the miracle and the miracles he's given you, go back and look at it. Take time and sit down and look at all the details because none of his details are lost with me. I go back and I say, and this, and that, and, and, and God, how? Because I can't even understand. But this is what he says to them. Go, scoop out, and pour. That's what they were, were going to do. Scoop this out. And they had filled it, and they knew it was water. And he says, then go ahead and take it to the master, the headmaster. And I'm thinking, okay, if I was... I know that's water. This is crazy. What are we doing here? And you know what? They go and they scoop and they get ready to pour. And I think they had to think, whoa, 
had have thought, man, this still looks like water. Oh, we're going to get fired. <laughs> this is over. This is water. I, I poured it myself. Yeah, I filled it to the brim, but it's water. And you start walking with your situation. You start walking with your problem that you're asking God to change. Maybe that fear, maybe that anxiety, maybe it's the future, maybe it's your health, and you're saying it still looks bad, still looks bad, still looks like water. This is like no recipe I've ever seen before because this is not how it happens. This is not how it happens. It takes years, and I don't have years. This is not normal. And you know what? God doesn't do normal. He does supernatural. And as they start to take it over, fear kind of sets in. But you know what? Stay steady on the word that he gave you, that he is good, that he is faithful. What did we sing? He is good. He is faithful. Your faithfulness. You're the same God. And I'm telling you right now today, because I need to hear it first, that God wants to do miracles like those miracles he did for people in the Bible, and better, and better. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm not going to sit and not participate. I'm not going to not acknowledge the problem, and those are the things we have to do. We have to acknowledge the problem. We have to seek the source, and we have to participate. But then it comes time when we've got to scoop and pour, and that's the hard part. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where I start to say, okay, it all sounded good when we started, but I don't know. And it might be embarrassing, and I might look bad, and people may laugh at my faith, but that's when I say, I know who he is, and he's the same God. And so what they start to do, they started to pour out The miracle, I think it was for Mary, it was for everybody at that wedding, but I think the miracle was first for those waiters because they participated. And you know what that kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of another miracle. It reminds me of the miracle of all the people that needed to be fed, about 5,000. Do you remember them? And the disciples are saying, I love the way Jesus says, Go, yeah, they're hungry. They're hungry. We should stop. Because that's what the disciple says. Let's stop. You know, whenever we get tired, let's stop, right? And he says, oh, we're not, not, not going to stop the party. We're not going to stop. This is getting good. Go get them something to eat. And I think all the disciples are like, oh, seriously, like, where are we going to go? And I went to Israel. There's nothing, okay? It, it, there's, there, if you didn't bring what you needed on that trip, you, you know, there's no Walmart, there's no Target, there's, there's nothing, there's no McDonald's, and they're thinking to themselves, like, okay, that's real good, but where? But he said, feed them. And they go find this little boy that has five fish and two loaves, and they bring them. And this is what we got. And he starts breaking it. And he starts feeding 5,000. And it said that only counted men, so I'm sure there were a lot of mamas there, a lot of kids. And they picked up leftovers. I love leftovers. Because when Jesus does something, he does it so big, better than we can even imagine. And when he did that miracle, the disciples participated. They were part of that miracle. They got to see what he was able to do. And so I'm telling you today, I don't know where you are at the recipe. I don't know where, if you stopped in the participation part, if you, you just really haven't looked at the problem, or if you haven't seeked the power. But I'm telling you, the recipe works. But it starts with relationship. It's knowing who God is. It's being involved with him. It's hearing his voice. It's knowing when to move and when not to move. It's knowing that even though you're afraid and you don't know what the future holds, he holds the future. And I'm telling you now, whatever you got, and if you say, hey, Sonia, because I'm saying it to myself, I don't got a lot. I'm tired. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm... I'm a little disappointed with the results I've had so far. You know, he says, bring me your lunch and sit back and watch what I'm going to do. 
And you know what? I'm going to tell you today. You're not waiting on God. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to recognize who he is and give you that miracle that you so need. And like I said, we have to sit and think, is it the miracle I think I want or is it the miracle I need? But he's faithful. He's always faithful. And I just think there's a lot of recipes I'd like to keep for my kids. I'd like them to do. But I think as grandmothers, as mothers, and I love what you said about the mamas that couldn't have babies or chose not to. We, as women, we have the power of word to speak to the next generation. So to your kids, there may be that chocolate cake that's amazing, that rice pudding, those tamales that my mom's passed on to me. But I'll tell you one thing that my mom has passed on to me is my faith. It wasn't her faith, because it was at one point when they were dragging me to church. And my dad was the pastor, so I kind of couldn't get out of it, right? Why do we have to go to church? You know, it looks bad if the pastor's kids don't go. Really? Okay, and that's a whole, I mean, after therapy, I've understood, you know. <laughs> but here's the thing. Pass this to your kids. Pass this to your grandchildren. And you know what? Some kids don't have grandmothers or don't have mothers. Be a surrogate. Pass it to somebody. Teach them the recipe, how to seek God, and know that he can do great things in their life. I thank you for this opportunity. I am so grateful to God that he wants to be involved with us, that he cares about the small things. So today, when you go out, think, God, I just want to get with you. I want to be alone with you. I want to talk about the recipe. And I'll tell you what, Mary provided an opportunity, saw the problem. She presented it. She went to the right source. And he did something that was far beyond. And I'll tell you why. This is the God you serve. They averaged and figured that it was 150 gallons of wine. He didn't bring six bottles. And that's where I say, it's better than you can even hope, imagine, or dream. That's our God. He's the same God back then as he is now. And it's up to us to decide to partake, to be part of this, to be a part of the miracle, because I know God has miracles in this room for those that want to participate. Thank you very much. May God bless. We're going to sing The Blessing. I don't know if all of you know it, but it's been out for a while. If you watch the worship nights that Emanuela and I and Autumn and Julie's daughter, what's Julie's daughter's name? Nina, Nina did. We did those. So, if you all will stand.
in our lives and that we would participate. God, that we would take that step. We would seek you out and we would walk in your goodness and in your miracles because we know that when we take that step, you will bless it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say thank you, Sonia, for your being here. Um, I know that I'm going to be um, trying to get that relationship you know, stronger and seeking for that miracle um, because the recipe is not always enough. So, good. Um, so, thank you guys all for being here. We want to uh, bless all of you, uh, mothers, grandmothers, daughters, every one of us. Um, have a wonderful Mother's Day uh, and go in peace. Amen. <laughs>